Does anybody want to learn SAP? I hope you enjoyed that little bunny montage. They're so cute and they run around. My daughter is going back to preschool and as part of the preschool program, she gets to take those rabbits home for a week. I personally have been really enjoying them. I like the chill rabbit vibes. And seeing as you guys like the cat video montage I did last week, I thought you would really like the rabbits as well. My name is Mike Taylor, AKA Battleship Cobra. You can check me out at www.battleshipcobra.com. I have an SQL for SAP Business One and a Crystal Reports for SAP Business One course. Like, share, and subscribe. And if you don't come to YouTube very often, hit that notification bell. It'll send you an email every time I make a video. I make videos Mondays, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time every week. So check those out. I've also rebooted the podcast. So go to www you don't need the www but go to podcast.battleshipcobra.com and check that out i have a few episodes there and i'm doing them as well weekly today we're going to cover the uffi and uffe the universal file format importer and the Un universal file format exporter they're a part of the b1 usability package they're really powerful they're basically for automatically exporting a flat file for integration purposes, and you can do it in your own format. So if you have to integrate with another software program, you can design the file and then have it automatically exported. And also the universal file format importer, you can import files from another system through flat file. It's the simplest way of doing integration work. It's very handy, and again, it's all built in. The Boyum team does great videos on them, and I'll link those in the description below. I'm just going to give my experience quickly of both of them and just give you a quick run through of how I've used them and include some code and all that stuff. So let's get started. So the first one I'm going to cover is the UFFE. Let's take a look at it. Universal functions is where it lives. We're going to find the UFFE. So this is the file exporter. So I did one that's very simple. It's an export type of single. You can do a batch style and the batch style allows you to have a header area, a line area, and then a footer area. So you can make kind of that, um, you know, you can say do like whatever format you need. This one I'm just doing straight row exports. So I have the header row here. So this is just card code, card name, doc date, doc due date, doc num, and doc total. Then the syntax that they use for each at line in the at doc lines query begin and you're just going to get those individual pieces of that query. So it's very, very straightforward. They explain it very well in the video. You can look at my line source here. So you can see I'm referencing the lines in at document lines. I made my own key. You can have multiple uh, queries there. You can see my query, it's extremely simple. I just have card code, card name, doc due date, da, 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 da. This is as simple as you can get. They do an XML version, a CSV version, and a batch version as well. I'm just gonna do a single 
CSV export just to show you and just show, it's so easy like you're basically doing this as a doc key The doc key is the primary key which in this case is going to be the card code. So it's going to export a list of uh, Invoices per the card code and then I'll show you how to do it as a batch So you can run this for an individual customer say put it on a function button But when you want to run it as a batch, I'll show you how to do that. So that's it Talk lines, and then you just get that. Um, you can have a body SQL source too, body C sharp if you're good with that. I showed you the line source. You select your path, so I did my path. You can have a dynamic file name here, so I have CSV, and then my uh, the uh, customer account name. I did a custom, customer XML, they covered XML already. Uh, formatting, I'll open the file after generation, and I have the log file there too. The cool thing here too is you can mark as handled in SQL. So you can say, when we've run it for this particular card code, it's going to use, again, this doc key is just the primary key put into this specific export. It's gonna set a UDF as complete. So you can say, export all of your invoices and it'll mark each one as it goes or export by customer and it'll mark the customers as you go. Super duper duper handy when you're running it on a schedule, okay? So I'm gonna run this for an individual customer and show you that. Modules, minute job, sorry. Business partners, go to the first one. Okay, my Battleship Cobra one, UFFE. Click it, it does its thing. It's running through, it's generating the file. Give it a second and then it's gonna show here. So here are the file. These are all the documents that I have there. So you have all the things you want in a, in a list. So once you have this exported, um, they, they even have an auto FTP program that is included with the B1 usability package. So you can then use this and just task schedule it and it'll auto FTP to like whatever you're doing, 3PL or you wanna send a price list automatically to somebody or you need to send a list of whatever, whatever you can think of, any integration scenario, you wanna send a list of inventory, um, inventory values, uh, whatever you can use it as a flat file, it's going to do that. So you can refresh here and you'll see that I, the invoice is exported was marked as yes. I'm just gonna uncheck that. So say you wanna do a batch, it's uh, really straightforward. Modules, administration, add-ons, B1 usability package, module configuration, universal function, universal function batch configuration. So I have my YouTube UFFE batch example. So you basically assign the universal function that I had. So this is my universal function I showed you. And then you're going to give it a specific set of codes to run from. So in this case I have I'm only going to do it for two, me and another one. And then I'm going to say only if the U underscore invoice export is no. So again, remember it's going to run for that and then it's going to mark them. So if it keeps running on a schedule, it's not going to keep pulling it. And then your card code becomes your doc key in the example here. So you see uh, where it's running in the line source, da 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 what you run in there, each one that you run as the primary key is gonna be the dot, that dot key, okay? Here, so it's active, login's enabled, shows options from the batch runner. So you don't actually run it from here. Obviously this can be way more complicated. So now you hit the batch runner. And again, this can just be scheduled. The batch runner can be scheduled with a function scheduler. I'm not gonna go through the server component, but it's super duper easy. You can look up the video for that too. Uh, the batch runner here, basically you're gonna drop it down. I have a YouTube UFFE batch runner and I'm gonna do the batch run right now. So it's gonna include these two. I select them all, does them, it's done, it's running and it's generating the files right now. So here come the files. File one and file two. This one was left over from my other one. So there's the two files, boom, and Battleship Cobra. And easy peasy, I'll show you where I keep them in that folder location. So that's done. Uh, folder location is here. So here you see, 
CSV C001 and uh, the other one. So this you could and you could take with the auto FTP and you can just send those to wherever you need to do for the integration, right? Super duper awesome, super duper easy. So uh, like usual, I'll have the code in the description for download. All that stuff will be available for you. So the next thing I'm gonna cover is the UFFI. In the video, they call it the UFI. I just call it the UFFI, Universal File Format Importer. So this is the opposite side. And this is this one's a little bit harder to use because the UFFI needs some C-sharp skills. So let's take a closer look at it. I'm gonna switch my B1 share over to my expense import. I'm going to paste my import file here. So this is my example. So the first thing I'll do is show you the code. So we're gonna to go to Universal Functions, UFFI, and you're gonna see I just have one. So you can see that this, unfortunately, it all requires C Sharp. This is not as easy as the export. So we're gonna click this ellipses button, editor, and you can see here the setup for the uh, UFFI, Blah, blah, blah. Do I understand all this? Mm, pretty much no, but uh, it works. And I'll show you the file that it works with. So this basically can take any file you want and do anything you want through the DI API. In this case, we're gonna make an AP invoice draft, which has uh, proven useful for a bunch of projects. So you can see here, it goes through some stuff. Yeah, like I said, I don't really understand most of this. If you understand more C Sharp, you can use it and get a lot of uh, information out of it. Um, what I need to do is uh, check that the number of segments in the account match the number of segments in the system. So let's take a look at that uh, universal file format importer format. So the file's loading. And again, the big benefit here to this particular method of doing it is B1UP provides the entire framework here. So you can interpret the file how you want, but there's a framework where you basically just put the file in a specific location, run the UFFI on a schedule, and it's going to process through the file. It's either gonna return a success, do whatever you wanted with the DI API, or it's gonna return an error and then give you a log. And then you can check the log out and see what kind of error message you got. So the file example I have that works with this importer, it has numbers, process date, who submitted it. So this is the name of the vendor. This file is designed to import from another expense management system. So the expense management system, certify, it gets dropped into a specific spot in the network. So you could see the vendor, that'll be the name, and you can see there's a mix. So it's gonna make one draft for vendor one and one draft for vendor two. I have the description, so this is just expense lines, this can be realistic, and then I have the GL account with the segments, how I'm going to interpret it in order to import it. Then I have the dollar total, and I have the tax code. So the other ones aren't technically used, but I set these columns that are gonna be used. This was the output from the system that we were matching to. So I exported that as a CSV, saved it in the expense import, and really the only thing that you need to do here is make sure that the vendor exists, make sure the GL accounts are correct, make sure the date is in the right format. And then again, if you take a look here at our editor, you just wanna make sure that your account code is segment one. So I have one, two, three segments. So you just have to modify that query. That's pretty much the biggest part that you have to modify. And you can edit any of these other things you want, obviously. Um, so you also need to make sure that you have the vendors in there that have the name, obviously they, otherwise they won't be able to import it. So you will, let's close this. I'm not gonna save anything, I'm gonna close this. So I'm gonna save a CSV into my expense import file format area there. So it expects, expect the expense import network location and again, normally this would be run by the server tools, by the server component, the B1UP server component. And you could do this as uh, quickly as every five minutes. I'm just gonna manually trigger it, okay? 
So, and I put some notes in here for you guys. Uh, modify number of segments, modify the work folder, edit the columns as needed to match the template. So you wanna make sure you match that template. Okay, so we'll cancel that. Modules, purchasing, import expenses. Import CSV files from blah, blah, blah. I did that as a prompt. So it goes through with the certify import, it's gone. And then what we could do is I also have this macro here, purchasing view my AP invoice drafts. Click it, boom, so now I have two. Document here, one, vendor one, document two. So uh, these are drafts, so you can double check them. The part about the AP invoices, it's permanent. So if there's anything you wanna add, modify, take out, any mistakes that were made, uh, you can go ahead and edit those before adding. And um, that will be something that's really useful if you're importing from another system. Um, it can be easily modified to work with any of the other objects, like sales orders or anything like that. Very, very straightforward. Remember that the UFFI and UFFE are really amazing tools. They come with the basic B1 usability package. So if you're considering getting the B1 usability package, you can easily just add those in. If you are already gonna do a flat file project, it can save you tens of hours and it will add a lot of value. If you ever had something that you wanted to automate the output of a flat file to a CSV or import from a CSV and then automatically upload it to an FTP, Boom, that's what you need and it'll handle it all for you. You need a little bit of work on the importer to have a developer write some C-sharp for you or you can take my file that will be in the video description below and edit it and do whatever you want with it. Again, the full videos on the UFFI and UFV uh, from Boyum will be in the video notes below. Check out my website at www.battleshipcobra.com. I produce weekly videos Mondays, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time like share subscribe and hit that notification bell if you don't come to youtube that frequently thank you guys so much talk to you next week